I have a question for you. If someone can prevent something terrible from happening, but chooses not to, would you consider that person evil? If the answer is yes, then do you always prevent something bad from happening? Do you consider yourself to be a moral person? In 1972, Peter Singer, philosopher and ethicist, published an essay titled Famine, Affluence and Morality, which presents a challenging and controversial argument regarding our moral obligations to help those in need. Singer's essay has gained a lot of attention and has been praised for its critical evaluation of our moral obligations towards the poor and the suffering. In this video, we will dive deep into the essay and explore its key ideas. He begins his essay by highlighting the devastating famine that was happening in the East Bengal, now Bangladesh, in the early 1970s. He notes that many people were dying due to starvation, and the situation demanded immediate attention and action. Singer argues that we as members of an affluent and relatively prosperous society have a moral obligation to help those who are suffering from poverty and starvation in the third world countries. He presents a thought experiment. Singer asks readers to imagine that they are walking past the pond and see a child drowning. They are the only one around and have the ability to save the child by jumping in and rescuing them. However, in doing so, they will ruin their expensive clothing and will need to spend a significant amount of money to replace it. Singer argues that most people would consider it morally imperative to save the child, even if it means sacrificing their own comfort or financial resources. The purpose of the thought experiment is to illustrate Singer's argument that we have a moral obligation to aid those in need, even if it requires significant sacrifices on our part. Singer argues that the drowning child scenario is analogous to the situation faced by those living in extreme poverty and suffering around the world. Just as we would consider it morally imperative to save the drowning child, we should consider it morally imperative to help those in need by donating to charity, volunteering our time or advocating for policy change. He then extends this analogy to the situation of the famine in East Bengal, arguing that we have a similar moral obligation to help those who are suffering from starvation, even if they are not physically present before us. Singer challenges the widely accepted moral framework of charity, which dictates that we only have a moral obligation to give if it does not harm our personal interests. He argues that this framework is flawed because it allows us to ignore the suffering of others if it does not directly affect us. Singer argues that we should be willing to make significant sacrifices to help those in need, even if it means giving up our luxuries and comfort. He also criticizes the traditional distinction between duty and charity. According to Singer, charity is a voluntary act of kindness or generosity, while duty is an obligation that we are morally required to fulfill. Singer argues that while charity is certainly a positive and admirable thing, it is not enough to address the scope and severity of the suffering and poverty that exists in the world. He believes that we have a duty to prevent harm and suffering, and that this duty extends beyond our immediate circle of family and friends to include all those who are suffering. This duty requires us to take action to alleviate suffering, rather than simply relying on acts of charity to address the problem. Singer argues that our duty to aid those in need is based on the principle of impartiality, which holds that all human beings are of equal moral worth and deserve equal consideration and respect. He contends that we cannot justify privileging our own interests and comfort over the well-being of others, and that we have a moral obligation to act to prevent harm and suffering whenever it exists. Singer's distinction between charity and duty highlights the limitations of relying on individuals' acts of generosity to address the systematic problems of poverty and suffering that exists in the world. While charity is certainly a positive and meaningful way to help others, it is not enough to address the root causes of these problems or to ensure that everyone is able to live a decent and dignified life. Instead, we must recognize our duty to act to prevent harm and suffering, and work towards creating a more just and equitable world for all. Singer also challenges the traditional concept of basic needs. He argues that we should not limit our moral obligations to providing only the basic needs such as food, shelter and health care. Rather, we should aim to improve the quality of life for those who are suffering from poverty and starvation. This means that we should not only focus on providing the minimum necessary to survive, but rather we should aim to provide opportunities for education, employment and other resources that can help individuals escape poverty and build a better life for themselves and their families. Singer's essay has been both praised and criticized for its radical approach to morality and philanthropy. Here are some counter-arguments against Singer's essay. The duty to help others is not absolute. 
While Singer argues that we have a moral obligation to help those in need, some people may argue that this obligation is not absolute. They may argue that individuals have their own responsibilities and priorities, and they should not be expected to sacrifice everything for the sake of helping others. For example, some people may argue that parents have a primary obligation to provide for their children and ensure their well-being, and this may limit their ability to help others in need. The effectiveness of aid is uncertain. While Singer argues that we should be willing to make significant sacrifices to help those in need, some people may argue that aid is not always effective in addressing poverty and suffering. They may argue that foreign aid can create a cycle of dependency, or that it can be misused or siphoned off by corrupt governments. Furthermore, they may argue that aid can create unintended consequences, such as disordering local markets or undermining local institutions. The role of government is important. While Singer focuses on the moral obligations of individuals, some people may argue that the role of government is crucial in addressing poverty and suffering. They may argue that it is the responsibility of governments to ensure that their citizens have access to basic necessities such as food, healthcare and education. Furthermore, they may argue that governments can play a key role in promoting economic growth and creating jobs, which can help lift people out of poverty. The idea of global community is unrealistic. While Singer argues that we should extend our moral obligations beyond our immediate circle of family and friends, some people may argue that the idea of a global community is unrealistic. They may argue that people naturally have a stronger bond with those who are geographically and culturally close to them, and that it is unrealistic to expect people to care about the suffering of strangers on the other side of the world. Furthermore, they may argue that cultural and linguistic differences can create barriers to understanding and empathy. It is unfair to expect individuals to bear the burden of addressing global poverty. While Singer argues that we should be willing to make significant sacrifices to help those in need, some people may argue that it is unfair to expect individuals to bear the burden of addressing global poverty. They may argue that poverty and suffering are systemic problems that require systemic solutions, and that it is the responsibility of governments, corporations and international organizations to address these problems. Furthermore, they may argue that it is unfair to expect individuals to give up their own comforts and luxuries while the wealthy and powerful continue to accumulate wealth and power. Charity is a personal choice, not a moral obligation. While Singer argues that we have a moral obligation to help those in need, some people may argue that charity is a personal choice, not a moral obligation. They may argue that individuals have the right to choose how they allocate their resources and that they should not be judged for choosing not to give to charity. Furthermore, they may argue that people have their own preferences and values and that they should not be forced to support causes that they do not agree with. In conclusion, while Singer's essay presents a compelling argument for a more compassionate and just world, it is not without its critics. These counter-arguments highlight the complexity and nuance of the issue of global poverty and the moral obligations of individuals towards those who are suffering. So, what do you think of Singer's argument? Do we have a moral obligation to help those in need, even if it means sacrificing our own luxuries? Let us know in the comments below.